Hey everybody, still in Paris, but I want to do another video for you guys. This one's going to be all about drawing techniques. How do I use my pencil to do the drawings that I've been doing here in Paris? Okay, and as you can see, I hold my pencil like this, kind of like a piece of Conte, a piece of charcoal. I don't hold it like this, like how I do when I usually write something. When I hold my pencil like this, I'm constantly using the point of my pencil, which will wear down the point of my pencil very, very quickly. How I like to hold it is kind of like this, like I was saying, holding it like a piece of Conte or something like that, where I'm constantly using the side of my pencil. So when you're drawing some nice shading or some soft lines, I tend to use my pencil where it is perpendicular to the line that I'm drawing. That way I'm using a nice fat part of my pencil and covering a lot of ground this way. Then when I want to do some sharp details, I'll hold my pencil parallel to the line that I'm drawing. This way when I'm using my pencil, I'm still using the side of my pencil, but it is just covering just a little tiny sliver of the paper because I'm drawing parallel along with the line that I'm drawing. This allows me to use some really nice sharp details without wearing down the point of my pencil. Of course, sometimes when you do need to do some intricate little details, I'll use my pencil like the traditional way, just holding it like this and just holding it like how I write. This way I can do some really sharp, tiny, tiny little details, but this is only used maybe 10% uh, of the time, 7% of the time when I'm drawing because I don't want to wear down my pencil. If you're constantly using the side of your pencil as well, uh, it will constantly sharpen your pencil because you're using the side of your pencil, right? And you're constantly sharpening that tiny little point. So if you ever need it, you got it. This was a technique that I just started using uh, on the subways of Toronto, where I didn't have a pencil sharpener. This will allow your point to stay as long as you can before needing to sharpen your pencil again. Another thing that I want to show you is some shading techniques. Okay, so here are the two main ones that I use. I use one where it's just shading all downwards. Okay, all my lines are going downwards and because they're going in the same direction, if I draw any other lines that are not going in that direction, those lines will pop right out even if they're super thin or perhaps very faint. You know, this is a very nice way to kind of separate the lines that you're using for shading versus the lines that you're using to separate things or to detail things. The next way of shading that I use is kind of like patches. I'll do just little patches of lines to cover a space. And I like this way because this way you can actually show something very flat while still keeping it somewhat interesting. Or you can use this way to kind of show shape as well. So you can have your patches kind of designed so it is going in perspective with the form. It's going around the form of whatever it is you're shading. So how do I use my line weight? Well, one way I use it is to help separate some things. That's something that's very obvious. You use a line to go along the edge of an object and therefore it helps to separate that object from any other object around it or behind it or whatever the case might be. Another way is to use line weight to emphasize shadow. So sometimes I'll put a nice thick line across something or underneath something if it's helping to emphasize the fact that that structure, it really starts to go into shadow at this point. I try not to do the same kind of line weight on the top of an object and the bottom of an object because that will tend to make things feel very flat even though you can help to make that object that you're drawing much more separated from the things behind it, uh, the same kind of line weight on the top and the bottom can definitely make things feel flat. A lot of times I'll use my sketch as part of my finished drawing. And what I mean by this is very seldom would I start from one end and draw all the way to the other end. What I tend to do is start on one end really nail it down, stop, lift up my pencil, go to the other end and continue it. And then the sketch part of it helps to tie in everything together. But otherwise, here we go. Let's bring this lesson full circle. I'm going to do a drawing for you guys and we're going to see how each of these techniques are used in the drawing itself. So if you like this short video, you're going to love schoolism.com. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already because 
This video is nice and short. However, the courses on Schoolism with the lessons and the assignments, that is how you really, really get good. And if these videos help you, those courses definitely will. Plenty of people take these courses, not just students, but mostly actually professionals. So if you're a professional that wants to continue their education, well, Schoolism is actually geared towards you guys. And if you're a student that really wants to get ahead, well, there's no better way to get ahead than to get absolute professional education from many of the industry's best. So as you can see, in the beginning of my drawing, I'm using pretty much the side of my pencil for the whole entire time. And I'm using it in a way where I'm just drawing fat lines. This way I can keep everything nice and soft, nice and ambiguous. So I haven't committed exactly to any real detail here. Uh, it's just more like suggestions of details at this point. This will help me to see and rejudge exactly where everything should be. You can see even with the eyes, I didn't do very sharp details at all. And then as we go further, then that's when I actually start to use a bit more of the nice sharp lines to put in my exact details. Then once I have a very clear idea of exactly where things should be, then that's when I'll start to darken my lines, make some real concrete details. I try to use the roughness of my sketch, the roughness of my sketch language to help me to really kind of see where it is I want to go without totally committing to it right away. You can see when I draw the hair in the ears, I first draw it in nice and light and loose to kind of help me to see the end result a little bit better and then I can emphasize it with some shadows. The face, you can see there's a lot of subtle details in the face and the first thing that I wanted to do to the face was just to use the vertical lines to just tone the face a little bit and that way because all the lines are all vertical any subtle details that I put in afterwards will still be very noticeable. Something to realize when I start to draw things that are supposed to be symmetrical, a lot of times as I'm drawing one nostril or as I'm drawing one eye, I'm actually concentrating on both the eyes, the eye that I'm drawing, and the space in between to try to see if it is exactly even. Now, I don't concentrate on these things all at once. It's more like switching gears really quick. So I'll just go, okay, how's the eye looking? Okay, how does the eye look compared to the other eye? Okay, if I stare right in the middle between the two eyes, does it feel the same? And then back and forth, constantly just switching gears, checking multiple uh, ways of checking my drawing to make sure that everything looks good. If you focus in on one thing a little bit too much, a lot of times that makes it actually harder to see what's out of place. And then and I'm starting to indicate a little vest on the, on the cat. Why a vest? Why not? I definitely think there's something special and a little strange about how we love to dress up animals. It just makes them feel a little bit more fun, I guess. Now with the vest, you can see that I don't continue my lines all the way around. I want to think about overlap. I want to think about 3D volumes and how much is the fur going to actually overlap the vest itself. You can see that I'm also detailing the eyes even more now. I'm emphasizing them even more because I kind of go in steps. I do things lightly with a fatter brush or a fatter line, you know, depending if I'm drawing or painting, and I'll check it, I'll double check it, and then I'll go over, add a bit more detail, add a bit more darkness, add a bit more exactness, and then check it out again. And then when that's looking good, then I get in there and start putting in my final details, or perhaps 
just a little bit more if it's something that I'm not too sure about. I really go in for the kill uh, when I know exactly what it is I want to have there and I can really see it much more vividly in my uh, own imagination. I try not to guess at things. If I do have to guess at things, I tend to use the fatter part of my pencil. That way I don't have to commit to anything. And you can see when I start to press hard, when I start to make some dark details, you don't really notice those fat lines that I had there before. And that's how this method works. You know, you actually use your rough lines to your advantage. It helps you to see more. It helps you to plan more. Sometimes it becomes actually part of your drawing. And this way, if you mess up a little bit, nobody would be the wiser because it's actually part of my drawing process. But can you see how the different things within the pencil drawing techniques video are starting to apply to all the little details that I'm painting in here? Or should I say, I'm drawing in here. You know, sometimes when you paint and draw so much, the lines start to blur almost. The thinking is very similar and uh, there's lots of things that can relate to each other. Also try to notice when do I use the vertical lines to shade completely downwards to just shade a patch and when do I use the lines where my pencil is going parallel with the lines that I'm drawing to bring out some nice sharp details. Notice that I also don't draw heavy outlines throughout the whole entire thing. I do have some indications of outlines but it doesn't go around the whole entire thing because then the outline would kind of overpower the whole entire 3D sculptural structuralness of, of the drawing. You can see a very clear indication of that in say like the ears. You can see that there's just like accents and then there's a break in the ears where you just see the rough line that I had initially and then it continues on with the finished line on the other side. Now the vest, I want to really get into what kind of vest, what is the feel of this vest. So I'm just scribbling down little random scribbles to bring out something that would feel like the patterns that I want on a vest. I don't want to get right in there and start detailing everything exactly because that'll take forever. I want to keep this drawing nice and loose and fun and full of life. You can also notice that I do have a piece of paper that I rest my hand on. That way I won't smudge the drawing. This is something that's pretty beginner, but still I thought it's important enough for people to see and for me to mention that I use constantly. A lot of times the things that will help us the most are the most basic things that we just figured was so basic we don't want to do them anymore or we feel like we could skip over. Something that I've noticed with so many great artists is that they really respect the process. They really respect the process as well as the fundamentals. Something that's always helped me throughout my life is looking to those people that I want to end up being like. So for example, looking to great artists and seeing what they care about and try to care about those things right now. Because if I do become a great artist, I figure I'm gonna to start to care about these things, the same things that they care about. Same thing goes with the older people. You know, I love listening to older people's advice because that's what I want to be as time goes on. I want to be older. I want to be able to get to old age. Therefore, it's important to me to care about the things that are important to older people. Things like, what am I going to leave behind? What will make my life worthwhile? And how can I leave the world better than when I entered it? Something else that I like to do is I like to look at my drawing in the mirror. That way I can see the mirror image as well as I can back up the drawing a bit so I can see what stands out, what doesn't stand out. This is something that is a constant throughout 
the drawing process. In this case, however, I didn't do that. Instead, I looked into the camera that I'm recording this from to see the drawing from a different view, to see it from a much smaller view, a view that feels a lot more further away. Now the background, you can see that I'm starting to do some of my patches for shading there. And it just helps to kind of texturize some things and doesn't make it so kind of rough looking when uh, you just do the straight vertical lines. When you do patches, it just, I don't know, I just kind of feel like it looks so much more interesting. Now, I know I signed the drawing, but this is kind of like a constant thing I do as well. Just when you think it's finished, you look at the drawing again and you go, oh yeah, I could use a little accent there. I could use a little accent here. I could use a little more detail here. This part could be a little bit stronger in terms of contrast and so on and so forth. All right, so that's the video, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys subscribe by hitting the uh, Eiffel Tower right here. Otherwise, see you guys next time. All right, take care, everybody. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the bonus material for my color and exposure lecture. I think that this one needs just a little bit more clarification for some of you. This is totally optional material but I've found that a lot of people are kind of struggling with this. So if you feel that you're struggling with color and how it relates to exposure, then this little segment will be helpful for you.